We want to welcome you to the broadcast today. I apologize for the uh, technical issues. I want to go ahead and say that right off the bat. I don't. I, I really don't understand what's going on. It looks like we still may be having some some things. And so, <clears throat> anyway, uh, when I saw we were having some uh, some problems, I just went. We did, we just closed down everything, restarted. Um, and so, anyway, we're 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 hope we're gonna uh, take two. All right, take two and. We're just going to hope that it gets out there, and we'll just uh, we'll do our best to try to keep this very brief today. Welcome aboard! It's good to have you watching today. Thank you so much for uh, for tuning in. Uh, my wife and I uh, took off for for a few days, and you know sometimes you have to come apart, or you'll come apart. They say, and uh, and so it's been a very very busy busy time, and so we just took off just a few days, and and so it's good to be back on here with you today. And so again, I apologize for the. Um, for the problems right off the right out of the gate today, but we're hoping that God's going to get this out there. We're going to do some uh, shout outs, and then we'll make an announcement or two, and then get right into our lesson. So, if you want to go ahead and grab your Bibles and turn on over to the Book of Hebrews, the Book of Hebrews, that's where we'll be just for a few moments today. Super simple broadcast, just a simple thought that I'd like to give you before we leave today. And so, again, thank you for tuning in to uh, the last few days. We had some. Uh, previous broadcast that we had aired and so today we're we're live and uh glad to be able to come to you and so anyway let's uh let's find out if anybody stayed with us today i know that uh, we lost several folks when we went back off the air and so again i apologize for that it looks like the hooks are on here with us at least and so it's good to have barry and christine watching from morgan to north carolina we welcome the hooks today good to see y'all with us uh the gillies are aboard and it's good to have donnie and tamra and we appreciate the Gillies in a big, big way. Uh, let's see here. Charles Jones. Hello, Brother Charles. Good to see you. And I hope you and Miss Rhonda are having a fine day today. It's great to have you aboard, Brother Charles. Thanks for watching today. Let's see here. Uh, the Daniels. Amen. Good to see Jimmy and Nellie Daniels with us. And uh, Jimmy and Nellie, God bless y'all. Thank y'all for tuning back in. I've seen y'all were aboard the first time, and so thanks for being back with us again. The same with Almeida Campbell. Almeida, thanks for tuning back in again, and it's good to see you. I hope you and Charles are having a blessed day today. Patsy Bird, Patsy, good to see you today. hope you're having a wonderful day, and we've been praying for you and Ronnie. So good to see you. Let's see here. Uh, Rodney Tomlin, Rodney, good to see you, my friend. hope you're having a wonderful day today. Thank you for tuning in to Countdown, and so that's a few. And I see there's a few folks that said there's no sound. And so um, anyway, it looks like on my end, everything is good. I, I don't know why there wouldn't be any sound. And so anyway, I hope, I hope that we have sound right now. Debbie Johnson just tuned in. Debbie, good to see you today. Hope you're having a great day. Appreciate you being aboard. All right. Well, hey, let me let me mention just a couple things real quickly, if I could, concerning this weekend. We're super excited about what the Lord is going to do this coming weekend. Don't forget, the uh, young people are having a fundraiser tomorrow over at Blake Farms, which used to be Van Hoy Campground, and now Blake Farms has bought that out, and so they're going to be having a uh, they're going to be having a, a fundraiser up there. And so uh, anyway, slight hesitation. My, uh, my engineer assistant just came in the door and gave me the thumbs, the thumbs up. You got to love the professionalism of this broadcast. Amen. And so my little redhead just poked her, uh, her head in the door and gave me the thumbs up. So we thank the Lord for that. And so anyway, uh, fundraiser tomorrow, uh, Blake farms right up from, uh, uh, Calvary there right on 901. I think they're going to start around 10 o'clock or so. I believe that's right. And so you pray for the uh, special uh, day they'll be having up there tomorrow. I think they've got a number of special events that are going to be going on uh, up there. And so let me encourage you to take advantage of that. And then also, we're very excited about Sunday evening. Sunday evening, we're going to be welcoming to the pulpit Pastor Brian Cardwell. Uh, Pastor Brian and Miss April will be back with us. These are dear friends of our ministry, and we're looking forward to a wonderful time together. It's going to be a great day, and so I hope that you'll make plans to be with us at the Calvary Baptist Church in Union Grove. It's a happening place. We're thankful for that, and we're hoping it's going to be especially a happening place this coming Lord's Day 
And so pray for us about that if you would. And uh, I appreciate it very, very much. Let's see here. Christine Edwards uh, uh, tuned in here. She said a little late. Christine, good to see you. Hope you and Gary are having a great day today. And uh, anyway, we're so glad for all of those that uh, are tuned in today. Well, let me see if I can take us to the split screen today. And uh, anyway, anyway, uh, we're hoping that, well, I'm telling you, the devil is fighting. And so y'all pray, y'all pray. You know what? You ever get, have you ever get, get, ever get the feeling the devil does not want this thing to happen? Um, so we're just going to go right, we're going to go right on here like, uh, like everything's going well. And so anyway, I want to talk to you today about this subject, the importance of a spiritual routine, a daily spiritual routine routine. Uh, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn over to the book of Hebrews with me. Uh, we've not been with you all this week live, and so uh, we just we just got today, and so I wanted to just leave a thought with you. I think probably one of the uh, one of the main questions that uh, that I uh, often answer is this one, preacher, how do you get something out of the Bible? How can I how can I read the Bible and get something out of the Word of God? Uh, or someone may ask some, something like this, preacher, how do you study the Bible? Or how can I study the Bible efficiently? How can I get something out of the book? I, uh, preacher, I, I, I read the Bible, but I want to get something out of the Bible. And so how can I, as a Christian, how can I gain something from the Word of God? Well, I would say this. There's a book that we put out a number of years ago called Knowing About Growing, and I'm sort of gleaning some of these things that I'll give you today from that book. And so if you don't have a copy of that book, I encourage you to get a copy of our book on knowing about growing. Well, let me put a scripture reference up on your screen today. Uh, Hebrews chapter number five, verses 12 through 14. If you have your Bibles, turn over there with me. If you don't have your Bibles, I've got it up on your screen and I'll read it for you today. Hebrews chapter five, verse number 12 says it like this. Uh, we'll read this, then I'll go back and I'll make a few comments about the uh, about the verses today. The Bible says, "For when the time, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use." have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So I believe there's some important things in these verses that I want to draw out today if I could. Now, uh, as we read through that, some may be saying, uh, Preacher, what in the world? What, what's the Bible talking about there? Well, I've got some uh, words that are emboldened and underlined on your screen. First of all, the Bible talks about the oracles of God. What is the Bible referencing when it talks about the oracles of God? Well, the word oracles there simply means utterances or uh, words. And so it simply means the words of God. And then you notice I've got in verse 13, I've got the word of righteousness uh, emboldened and underlined. Again, pointing to the fact that this is just talking about, simply talking about the word of God. It's talking about the scriptures. Then the Bible says this, who by reason of use have their senses exercised. Who by reason of use. I think that's important. It's important for us to use the word of God. In other words, if you don't use it, uh, you're not going to receive exercise, which that's exactly what the Bible is pointing to right there. Uh, let's look at that again. Who by reason of use have their senses exercised. Exercise. Now, what is the Bible trying to say? And basically, very simply, the Bible is saying this, that we, it's important that we as Christians read the Word of God. And as we read the Word of God, it's, it exercises our spiritual life. It exercises us as a child of God. The more you read it, the more exercise you get. The more you read it, the more you're going to get from it. You've heard this statement before, no pain, no gain. In other words, if you don't if you don't push yourself a little bit, you're not going to gain anything from it. Uh, you may buy a treadmill or you may buy a, a, an elliptical and put it in your house. But the truth of the matter is, if you don't use that elliptical, if you don't use that treadmill, isn't this the truth? 
that a lot of times people will buy an exercise bike or, or they'll buy a treadmill and then they use it to hang laundry on it or they use it to, uh, to, to, to stack things on it. Now, uh, we often joke about that, but the truth of the matter is, is that you can buy an expensive piece of exercise equipment, but if you don't use it, it's not going to, to benefit you. Now, that's what the Word of God is teaching us here, that if, if we want to gain from the Word of God, we've got to exercise ourselves every single day. It's imperative that we be in the Word of God and we spend time in prayer. Now, that's where the importance of a daily spiritual routine comes in. Every day, we've got to exercise ourselves by getting into the Word of God. Uh, someone said it like this, a dusty Bible leads to a dirty life. Someone else said it like this, a Bible that's falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. When I love this statement, sin will keep you from this book, or this book will keep you from sin. And so concerning exercise, it's important that you, you develop a daily routine every single day, a daily routine. If you don't have a daily exercise routine, you're probably not going to exercise. Now, wait a minute now. If you, don't, if you and I don't have a daily routine, spiritually speaking, we're probably not going to exercise ourselves spiritually. If you don't have a daily time when you pray and a daily time when you spend time in the Word of God, you're probably not going to walk with the Lord. And so it's important that we have that daily spiritual routine. Well, you say, Pastor, what are you talking about? Let me put a reference on your screen. Psalm verses, uh, Psalm chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Listen to what the psalmist said here and notice the words. He says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Listen to this. And in his law doth he meditate day and day and night. You get that idea there? There's that routine. Day and night. He meditates day and night. Listen to what it says in verse number three. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Again, there's that idea of a spiritual routine. Let me put another reference on your screen. How about Psalm 55 and verse number 17? The psalmist David said, evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. Again, there's that idea of a daily routine. Every single day, the psalmist said, every day he's going to hear my voice at evening and morning and at noon every single day. Let me give you another reference here. How about Psalm 63? And verse number six, the psalmist said, when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. Again, the psalmist here evidently had a routine that when he went to, the, when he went to bed at night, before he went to sleep, he would spend some time with God. He would spend some time in the word of God. I love this. This is so great. Listen, uh, this is all I'm saying. Someone says, preacher, how can I get something out of the word of God? You and I need to develop a daily routine every day. Listen, okay, just like you have a daily routine for eating breakfast or just like you have a daily routine for eating supper. Some of you, you eat breakfast every day at the same time. Some of you eat supper religiously at the same time, 5 o'clock, 5.30, 6 o'clock, whatever it may be. And uh, you know that you're going to be eating breakfast or eating supper every day at a certain time in the same way. It's important that we as children of God know that, that we have a routine and every day at a certain time, whether it's in the morning or whether it's at noon or whether it's at night, it's important that we have a time that we know and that God knows that we're going to meet with him. He's going to meet with us and we're going to spend time with him every single day day of our life. Let me give you another reference here, bottom portion of your screen. I love this. Speaking of Daniel, Daniel had a daily routine. Listen to this. In Daniel chapter 6, verse number 10, the Bible says that when Daniel knew that the writing was signed and he went into his house 
and his windows being opened in the chamber toward Jerusalem. Listen to this. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did a four time. I love that. You know what the Bible's saying there? That every single day, Daniel had a time. He had a daily routine. Oh, listen, if you're sporadic with your Bible or sporadic with prayer, you're probably not going to, you're not, probably not going to exercise in prayer in the Bible like you need to. And so it's very, very important that we have a daily spiritual routine on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every single day. And the more you do that, the more that God is going to use his word to speak to you and the more you're going to be able to speak to the Lord in prayer. Well, that's a simple word today, but it's a good word. And and uh, listen, let me see if I can take us to the uh, uh, solo screen here. I apologize. We had so, mu- so many problems today. I don't know why. I wish I knew uh, why it, it, it's like that sometimes. Uh, sometimes I think it's just spiritual warfare, to be quite honest with you. Uh, we tried to sort of make sure that we jump through all the hoops and and those kind of things. And, and even with all of that, sometimes we still have issues. And I apologize for that. And so if you think this would help someone, let me encourage you to share the broadcast. If you're watching today and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, oh, listen, we would love the opportunity to reach out to you and to try to tell you how you, you can know Christ as Savior how you can know for sure you're going to have a home in heaven. You say, Pastor, no one can know. Sure they can. Scripture tells us very specifically that we can know. If you're watching today and you don't know Christ, be sure that you call this number on the bottom portion of your screen. It's our prayer helpline number at Calvary, and we would love to reach out to you and share some scriptures with you and tell you how you can know that you're going to be on your way to heaven. And then if you're watching today and you've got a a super heavy burden Oh, listen, you don't have to walk through that by yourself. We, we'll be glad to pray with you about that. If you'll call this number, leave a callback number in case nobody answers, and we want to call you and we want to pray with you uh, over the phone. I promise you we would love to walk through that valley with you. Then all of our Countdown family, don't forget, be kind to everyone because everyone's having a tough time. Listen, thanks for tuning in. And staying with us, even though we had some technical difficulties today, we're looking forward to a tremendous, tremendous weekend at Calvary Baptist Church. I hope that you'll come and be with us. It's going to be a great, great time. We look forward to being back with you next week on Countdown to Courage. And until then, God bless you is our prayer. Have a great day.